So as for the design of the framework, uh, whatever the framework that uh, we designed uh, yesterday, um, the first point is uh, we, we have the execution driver which is written in uh, Excel macros right? and we are going to see it again and we are going to implement those Excel macros, all those things uh, as part of framework. Uh, but according to the design, what should happen is when we have the you know uh, driver, generally we will be executing from uh, Excel driver, right? So user opens or the automation tester opens that Excel macro driver, and internally that Excel macro driver connects to the QC by using uh, OTA, quality center by using OTA open test architecture, and also it connects to the automation tool for execution, right? Then uh, OTA part we will see, uh, you know, uh, next. And first we will understand AOM. How normally we can connect to the automation tool automatically, and then how we can launch the tool, and then how we can execute the scripts. Uh, I don't touch the UFT at all. Okay, I don't touch the UFT. So it has to open automatically, and then it has to uh, open the test. I, I will give the path of the test, which test need to be opened. And then it has to run automatically, and then it has to give the result also, execution result, okay, to me, right? And similarly, I also need to execute uh, the batch, uh, like you know, when I give multiple scripts, one by one, it has to automatically open, and then it has to run it. Let's understand that now. To do that, normally we write AOM. AOM starts for Automation Object Model. And what is meant by Automation Object Model exactly is, uh, by using this approach, AOM approach, we access the API of the tool, uh, Application Programming <coughs> Interface. Uh, API of the Automation Tool. Tool is nothing but UFT here, or QTP or UFT, whatever it is. We write the uh, same uh, AOM, okay? And, uh, uh, we can act uh, by using this API or uh, by accessing this API, we can do all the settings, whatever the settings required in uh, EFT uh, or QTP. We can do all the settings programmatically, and we can also do all the configurations. Like you know, once you open the test, uh, the libraries, whatever you want to load, or the repositories, whatever you need to associate for that test. Everything you can do outside the EFT by using this AOM. Also, this AOM deals with the shared object repository as well. Okay, so in case you know, if you want to handle the shared object repository uh, to retrieve the path of the uh, object, uh, test object in the repository, like normally when we say to access an object in the script, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Browser dot, page dot, something like we have to give the complete hierarchy uh, in the script. That's what we have seen as of today. But, you know, going forward, you know, the other way of scripting is when I provide the logical name, just I give the logical name, what is the name that I have given uh, to look at the object in the shared repository or uh, usually it's, it should be shared repository, not local repository. Okay, then when I just give the logical name, it has to automatically fetch the hierarchy of that object, how that object has been stored in the repository, and should uh, you know uh, work, uh, should execute the script. So that means that I don't need to write the complete hierarchy of the object every time, and then I just give only the logical name. Then it should automatically fetch the class of object, what class of object it is, and then what is the hierarchy of that object stored in the repository. Okay. And that is the reason, you know, we were following the unique naming conventions in uh, the previous uh, script. Okay, so why I have changed uh, browser name, page name, or the objects, whatever I added to the repository. Why I was changing, uh, why I was giving unique uh, names because of this. Okay, we are going to implement this kind of approach uh, going forward. So, uh, this AOM normally deals with this tool, QDP and uh, UFT, and also, uh, this AOM deals with the uh, repository as well, but for both, we have got two different uh, API objects they have given, two different objects that they have given, okay, so we will see both, first we will concentrate on QTP and UFT, and then we will concentrate on uh, shared repository, but both are important here, okay, so now let's come back to the, you know, uh, uh, AOM with UFT, uh, you know, QTP or UFT as a tool, both the same, uh, 
the same kind of program you write, uh, not too much. Uh, change, not too much change here. Uh, this AOM, actually this uh, API object, whatever we are going to initiate, has been given uh, uh, earlier days itself, maybe when QTP was there. So that is the same, even though it is EFT now, but you use the object which was created for QTP. That is called quick test dot application. Quick test dot application. Quick test is a namespace there, uh, library, and application is the class in that. So if you want to deal with the tool EFT or uh, QTP, uh, first okay, you need to create the instance of the object called quick test dot application. Okay. So by using this object instance, you can access all the uh, methods, whatever you can do or whatever you need to deal with the tool. Okay, so first thing that what I am doing is here, I am creating the instance of tool or you can say now we are dealing with EFT, we are working with EFT, right? You can say OEFT equals to create object, create object, with test dot application create object quick test dot application so if you ask me why this quick test uh, qdp has gone now qdp is gone and it is uft now but why i'm still initiating a quick test dot application why not uft it is the reason because as i told this class or this namespace quick test namespace was created when qdp was there but all this uft are now just an extension of uh, previous versions that's it so you know, since this class was defined, all the methods, everything was defined earlier itself, they are continuing the same here. Because if they redesign, then they had to change a lot of classes, lot of methods and all. You know, it, it is going to be huge efforts. So that's the reason they are continuing the name quick test only. Okay, so because this was already defined when QTP uh, was there, older versions, and then it with this class was defined already. This name, this and class were defined. So that they are continuing the same, they are just doing extension now, uh, they are extending those methods that say they are not redesigning again. Because if they redesign and give a new namespace name which matches with the uh, EFT, then uh, that is going to be huge efforts. So that they are continuing to test only when it comes to the API side. Okay, but it's just a name, that's it. Okay, functional wise and all, it deals with EFT. Okay, fine. Now, uh, we have initiated the object quick test dot application. So first thing, the, we will start with the basics now. The first thing is in the tool, uh, what should I do? The very first action, I need to launch the EFT. EFT, right? I need to launch the EFT. Then it's a OEFT dot say launch. When you say OEFT dot launch, that means that okay, so you are asking to launch the tool here. But when you launch the tool like this, then by default, tool will be launched in invisible mode. Okay, tool will be launched in invisible, that means hidden mode, it will launch in hidden mode. So, what you can do is you say OEFT dot visible equal to true, that means you are making it as visible you are making it as visible okay so save this script as vbs file save this script as vbs file just say i'm you know uh, creating aom i'm just creating a folder called aom here then uh, i'll just say basics of aom that is the file name that i'm giving and the file extension must be vbs okay executable file <coughs> Say, okay. okay, and then open that folder where we have saved the VBS file and double click on it. Okay, so when you double click on that, the tool should get launched. It takes little time uh, because it has to load all the add-ins and all. But remember, when you launch programmatically like this, it will not ask for uh, adding manager. It will not ask for adding manager. As you see, Whenever you launch the EFT, there will be add-in manager displays, right? It will not launch the add-in manager. By default, it will select the add-ins, whatever the add-ins were selected in previous launch. Pre when you launched the tool previously, whatever the add-ins were selected, plugins were selected, same add-ins will be selected by default. 
but in case if you want to select different add-ins then you can do that uh, before you launch the tool let's see why it is taking this much time One minute. Yeah, actually see it is launched right the process is running but did we make visible as true yeah right just wait for some time. Yeah, it's launched. It is taking little time to launch. Okay, it could be problem with the system or it is not, you know, uh, launching the UFT itself takes little time uh, normally, you know, or sometimes when your system configuration is low, it takes some extra time. So that's what it has taken now. So, but you can see that it has launched automatically. Now, what you need to do is, if you run the script one more time, the same script, whatever I have here, if you run this script one more time, then what happened? So, since it is already launched, then it will say that, okay, so it tool is already launched. Okay, so normally you should get the error message here, okay, but probably, okay, so it is not showing. Uh, since it is already launched, it should not. Uh, it should say that it is already launched. That's okay. But what uh, logically, what you have to do here is, before you launch the tool, first you need to verify whether the tool is already launched or not. Okay, tool is already launched or not. If the tool is already launched, then you don't need to launch one more time. If tool is not launched, then you launch the tool. Then how do we do that? Okay. Say so if OFT dot launch is for launching it, and there is one more thing called launched. Launched is a property. So this will verify whether the tool is already launched or tool is not launched. Then this returns true or false. If launch returns true, that means tool is launched already. If launcher returns false, that means tool is not launched. Then what I am doing is, say if not launched, if not launched, then you launch it. Hmm? Else, else, give a message box saying that, okay? About saying that okay, tool is already launched. Okay, tool is already launched. That's it. So what I'm doing? If not launched, just uh, you know you launch it. If it is all if already launched, then you just give a message box saying that tool is already launched or tool is already uh, opened. Something like that. You can. Uh, display message there. Okay, now let me run the same script again one more time. It says that tool is already launched. So launched is for um, check whether tool is already displayed or already opened or not. Launch is for open the tool. Okay, launch the tool. Now, so what I have to do is here before I launch the tool see what I need to do is uh, uh, you know add-ins might be different from application to application okay so here probably we are working with web based application or you may need to work with the windows based application probably .NET or Java or something like that right so what I have to do is Whenever I launch the tool, probably I need to select the add-ins. Right now, let's see what are the add-ins selected. Activex and Web. These two add-ins are selected by default when I launch the tool. Why these two add-ins are selected? Why not others? Because when I launched the tool previously, when I launched it manually earlier, I, I was selected these two add-ins. Okay, I had selected, I had selected these two add-ins, Activex and Web. So next time when I launch, it is taking the same add-ins here. But now, this time when I launch, I need to select different add-ins. Maybe I need to select Java and, uh, oh, is Java add-in in there? Or maybe I need to select Visual Basic and Web. Okay, Visual Basic and Web. 
then what I do is to now probably I'm just closing the tool again. Okay, I'm closing the tool. So if tool is not launched, I need to launch it. But before I launch, I need to select the add-ins. Remember, new add-ins can be selected before you launch the tool. Once the tool is launched, add-ins cannot be selected. New add-ins cannot be selected. That's a basic rule here. No add-ins will be selected before you launch the tool. Then what I'm doing is here, okay, to select the add-ins, required add-ins, first add-ins must be stored in array. If it is a single add-in that you want to select, you can directly give the add-in name to the method. But if you are selecting multiple add-ins, then you cannot directly provide the add-in name, single add-in name there to the method. So you have to store those add-in names in the array and then you can pass the add-in collection there. So you, you have to use array there. Then what I am doing is say add-ins to select, add-ins to select. Then what I am saying array, this will basically comma, I will say web. So two add-ins I want to select and both the add-ins I am giving in array. Then how can I select these two add-ins? Then OFT dot, there is something called set active add-ins. Instead EFT to load the specified add-ins. Then you just give this list. Okay, well you have to dot set active add-ins, add-ins to select whatever the add-ins to be selected, you just keep. Okay. Now let's see, let me rerun again. Let me rerun again. So it takes little time to load the tool, uh, that's problem with EFT only. Now ok, so it's so launched and go to settings and you can see add-ins are changed, ok add-ins are changed. But it should be given, you know, the launch should be given, uh, sorry, uh, that uh, set active add-ins method should be given before you use launch method. If the tool is already launched, then you will not be able to give that. Okay, so in case if you want to retrieve the add-ins which are already selected, which if you want to retrieve the add-ins selected after launching, then you have a method called get associated is for not a. You can see there is something called get associated add-ins for test. AA stands for application area which comes in business process testing and uh, BC stands for business component there is something called baseline you will understand it later BPT business process test case then test is for normal test so get associated add-ins for test that means that it will retrieve the add-ins which are already selected for the test set for uh, selecting the add-ins, what add-ins required, get for getting the add-ins, what are already associated. Okay, so this is, but we don't need to use this method as of now. Okay, right. Next, according to our framework, according to our framework, we, we are, you know, we, we will be having one XML file where we set up the configuration because so tomorrow in case if somebody wants to change the add-in again they have to come to the script and then they should do the modification again there is a script level modification required but when you are defining an automation framework so maintenance should be very easy and you know once you completely implement that framework script level changes and all should not be required but in case if it is extremely you know 
it was not exist earlier and it has come new probably you know you may need to, you, you may need to do the uh, script level change but when it is a maintenance kind of work like you know selecting different add in selecting different test data or maybe something like that tool kind uh, configurations or all this script level modifications and all should not be required should not be done much so in this case what i have to do in case tomorrow if somebody wants to uh, select a different add in then if you give like this again they have to come here and do the change right so for that reason what we did is to reduce this maintenance effort or to reduce the maintenance work in our design we have given something called xml file there you know right configurations.xml file that we have given so in that configuration configuration and tool settings you know we will specify what are the add-ins need to be selected in the xml file we will specify what are the add-ins need to be selected based on the add-ins that whatever we provide there then tool should launch it automatically tool should select the add-ins <coughs> now for that reason what we have to do first we create the xml file you know we create the xml file and then accordingly we will load the add-ins then how do we do that so first you create the xml now configurations i'll create a folder first uh, whereas i'll just say uh, i'll go to e drive or i'll go to d drive then i'll create a folder called framework okay so in the framework i will store the folder as configurations okay in the configurations we'll say uh okay i will give it as tool settings dot xml or by default it will be saved as xml only right okay so i did uh, saved as an xml now what i'll do is i'll just give the root tag as config and we just specify this okay then i will say first visibility okay so visibility then if i give true here tool should launch in visible mode in the xml configuration if i give true then tool should launch in invisible mode sorry visible mode if i give false here so then tool should launch in invisible mode okay so you have to change it then next i'll say add it I'm sorry. This should be okay. Sir, so, add-ins. Next step. When you say add-ins here, uh, what are the add-ins required? <coughs> so first, I will create one element add-in. For each add-in, one element will be created. add it whatever the add ins required i'll just give this so i will create two elements or multiple elements depends on number of add ins that you want to select okay depends on number of uh, add ins that you need to select you can create the elements if you want to create one more add in then you can just give like this this is activates okay so this is another add -in. so now i am giving three addings now i am giving three addings and then these three addings must be selected so what i have to do now 
I have written AOM here, but they are not complete AOM, just basic I have written now. See, the set active add-ins, right? I have given the add-in collection. So, this add-in collection should be taken from here. I don't want to directly give that add-in collection. Okay, so I don't want to give the add-in collection directly here. I don't want to give the add-in collection directly here, hard-coded. So it has to take from XML. Also, I don't want to make it as visible directly, you know, depends on the XML because when you are launching the tool in a de for debugging purpose or maybe, you know, executing in normal mode and having delay time step by step, you can run in visible mode. But when you are running for the actual pro uh, release, right, and uh, uh, when you are validating the application and all, so to take the screenshots, all those properly, screenshots of the application during execution and all, only application should be visible, right? And your tool and all, if it is visible, when it takes a screenshot, then it will come along with the tool script and all. So screenshot will, application screenshot will, be, will not be taken properly. So that is the reason when we are doing normal, ex for normal execution, then it has to launch in, in invisible mode and then it has to run the scripts one by one. So that only application will be visible for us and scripts will be executing and then we can clearly see the application. Okay. So depends on uh, when I'm, uh, depends on the situation, I will make the visibility as true or visibility as false, whatever it is. Okay. So now these settings should be done according to that particular XML. Right. Then how do we get the, how do we get the XML, uh, uh, how do we read that XML and then how do we do that setting according to the XML here? Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to initiate the XML DOM object. There is one more object called XML DOM which we have already learnt in VB script, right? So we need to use that XML DOM object here and then we need to read that particular configuration from XML, right? Then how do we do that? How do we do it? Then you say set OXML equals to O, you can say you will be having two XML files. One is for uh, loading the libraries and repositories and the second one is for Uh, configurations, resource configurations. Uh, one is for tools, settings and configurations, uh, sorry, uh, uh, settings and uh, uh, other things that whatever you want to do at uh, tool, level, uh, tool level and uh, other one is for each module what kind of libraries and repositories need to be loaded and all, you will specify in other XML. Okay. Set O config equals to uh, create object create object Microsoft dot XML dot Microsoft dot XML dot okay fine we'll make it as a config file but anything else is just not a matter in this variable name it is that's okay then what you have to do is what you have to do is you have to load that XML first you have to load that XML file, that config file, XML DOM object dot load. But the problem is here, okay, if I, I will give that XML file path. Uh, okay, so where I have uh, created this, just let me open this folder path where exactly it is. Just take this XML file. Okay. Now I have given the absolute path of that particular XML uh, from which XML file it has to. Read. But one of the problem is here the path whatever I have given. See how the path uh, has been given here. So the uh, absolute complete path has been given directly, but in the reality, in the reality, the path will be changing from system to system. Now, when I am setting the framework in this system, I have followed this 
path or maybe I set up in a D drive and then uh, uh, in the D drive I have set up. But in other system, in other system, they might be having D drive or they might not be having D drive or maybe the client machines are dull, they don't have D drive, the remote machines, all those, they have only C drive. So they will set up the framework in C drive, they will check out to C drive. Then in that case, then file cannot be located, right? File cannot be located. So you should not hard code the path there. So that's the reason what we do is we will change little bit now. Okay. So what I am doing is I am creating one system environment variable. We will parameterize that path also framework path. So what I am doing is I am going to create an environment variable at system level. Okay. Then I am creating a new variable called framework path. Then I will give say D framework. I am giving root folder path here. So in every system we do this setting so that it will be taken tomorrow if the path gets changed i don't need to change the script i can directly come here and do that but manually i am creating that but that also should be automated so as i told we are going to create macro files later or you know excel driver file from there we need to do this uh, you know setting as well creating the parameter so script will take the path from this particular parameter so what i should do is now to avoid the hard coding of the path i will read the root path address root path address from the environment variable file sorry environment variable whatever i just created system environment variable right not system yeah in that environment variable we need to read but not system variable it is user variable there right we created the user section there are two sections one is user second one is the system first one is for user second one is for uh, system okay so uh, what i mean to say is here to properties in environment variables you can see this is user this is system i created in the user section you can still create under system also that's not a problem but system is for accessible by all the users who have logged into this system. User is only for this user, current user. Okay? Fine. How do you read the value from that variable? That's for EFT inside environment. That is not EFT environment variable. That is system level environment variable. No. No. You have discussed this already. That's the use of those variables, you know, like uh, the global settings if you want to do, probably we normally do it from those uh, variables. That's also called as an environment variable only, but not the tool. Tool specifies a different set of environment variables. That is different. This is system gives you. Any idea? Anyone? I already told this. Did I not? In WSH? In WSH? I didn't tell. Okay, so how do you do this? Set OWSH equals to create object, create object, WSQB dot shell. Okay, WSQB dot then now you get str framework path equal to okay framework path equal to owsh dot environment of if it is user just give the user type if it is uh, system then you don't need to give uh, as system by default it will take the system since we have created under user section there you have to give as user dot item of 
give the parameter name. Remember, parameter name is case sensitive. Say framework underscore path. Is this the parameter I have created? Yeah. So what this will do is it will go to this parameter under this section and it retrieves the value of it. In case if the parameter is not there, in case if the parameter is not there, then it will return empty value. If the parameter is there, it will return the value whatever is set. If the parameter is not there, then it will return empty value. Okay. So, what I will do is now, before I give that path directly, because sometimes user will execute without setting, uh, doing that setting, right? So, in such cases, script will fail, you know, because it will not get the path. So, my validation will be, before I continue with my scripting, first I will verify whether the path has been set into that particular variable or not. If it is empty, then if it is empty, I'll say I will just give a message box as an error message. Uh, say, okay, framework path was not defined in the user variables system environment. variables in system properties ah, user environment variables huh? user right user environment variables in system properties ok framework path I'll just give it a case to right I'll just say framework path was not defined framework variable was not defined or is not defined in the user variables section right ok then to set up the to set up the variable ok go to system properties advanced environment click on environment variables button Go to user uh, section and create. Okay, so create variable and create a variable. Say uh, framework framework path. And uh, what is that? Yeah. And give the framework root path. So it will be very clear. Message will be very clear. Then what it should be done is w script dot. That's it. Okay. Now, so here what I'm doing is instead of uh, Taking this, so now I am not hard coding the path, getting what I am saying here, all these are just for maintenance for scripting wise it will take some time to write the script and all, uh, but you are giving as much as flexibility that you can, uh, you are giving the flexibility as much as you can, at the same time you are reducing the maintenance efforts. So everything is being almost you know parameterized and everything is being configured externally. <coughs> so tomorrow if the path gets changed, you don't need to open the script. So I'll tell you, I will not give this source code to you. 
I'll just give you an exe file and you just need to run that exe file that's it. To do that settings and all, you just need to run the exe file or this will be written inside the macro. Not here, <coughs> right now I'm writing VBS file, but this will be written inside the Excel macro. So for that Excel macro, I will give the security, I mean I will uh, uh, provide the security, like I will give username and password, you may not be able to open it. So you will not be able to see inside. So that's the reason, you know, because if you update there in the driver file, it may impact everybody. So that is the reason we will uh, not access for everybody to change the path and all. So all the settings will be done externally so that you know instead of doing inside then you can now do in external parameters. Right. Okay. So now what I am doing is uh, I am retrieving the path here. That's okay. So next what I need to do this add inside I need to read right. Add inside I need to read. So before I uh, <coughs> set up the add-ins, I need to get the add-ins from XML. Set O add-ins element equal to O XML dot, sorry, what is the file that I have uh, created, config file, right? Config file dot get elements by tag name get elements by tag name or uh, did I tell something called uh, select single node select single node yeah so you can use select single node I am saying get elements by tag name anything is okay this is how I created right add it but before you read this XML, first thing you need to verify whether this XML <coughs> is properly structured or not, right? Sometimes, you know, when uh, users are changing that XML, they do the mistakes, right? So in such cases, you will get the parse error. In XML doc, we have seen that. So before you read that XML configuration file, you verify whether that the configuration file is correctly created or uh, not. Then what you do is, before you read this, you just give like if o config file o config file dot parse error sorry parse error dot error code is not equal to zero what does it mean there is some error then message box okay message box There is an error found in, there was an error found, okay, let's say an error found in XML file, error is captured as below, you know VBC RLF right, for new line. So just give the message saying uh, how do you retrieve the error message exactly? You say parse error dot reason w script dot quit. Okay, so all this is the places where we use XMLs. Or WSH and all that. Here we might not have got complete situations to use this XML DOM and all. But when you are defining the framework, all this and all, you deal with the uh, configurations and you deal with the uh, some XML system variables, all those things. Okay, fine. Next is okay. In case if that error is there, uh, it will stop the execution. It will not come to the end. Next, what should I do? Uh, in case if that XML file is good. I am retrieving the add ins element. Uh, you can 
let's say all or add is to select equal to array. What is that array function does exactly? Any idea? What that array function does? Convert a scalar variable into array variable. And when it converts, it converts into dynamic array. Okay, so I'm just making that as an array, or you can just say dim uh, add to select and dynamic array, you can make it as why well. it should be dynamic array here because uh, sometimes I may give only one add in, sometimes I may give uh, two add ins or three add ins or four add ins, something like that, you know, add ins may be extended. So, since you know, uh, it depends on the application that you are working on and depends on the module you are working on, you might need to select a different add in there. Okay, so in such cases, uh, you know, it has to be dynamic array because we don't know how many values will be coming into that. So, values are nothing but names of the add ins. Okay, now what I am doing is Okay, what I am doing is, uh, see this is going to be a little complex uh, for now. We will go line by line again, one more time, no problem. What I need to do, what we, what I am doing is now, uh, set O chase or is a add in collection equal to dot item of zero dot what I am doing here chain nodes what is the chain nodes for okay first del this element add in element I am getting the chain nodes what the chain node will do each add in is nothing but a child node there. Total add in equals to what is that length? Give the count of the nodes. Right? Dot length gives the count of the nodes. Then reading. What I'm doing, I'm resizing the target. Let I'm providing the size of the array according to the number of addings given. If three addings are given, size will be two, zero to two it will be. If four addings are given, uh, uh, that uh, array will be, uh, you know, the size of that array will be set to three like that. For i equals to 0 to total addings minus 1 total addings minus 1 then where, where is that addings to select right addings to select of i ok 0 to what is that function dot item of i dot text know what I am doing here yeah one by one ok so item of 0 means first chain item of 1 means second chain item of 2 means third chain so one by one item that I am selecting one by one item that I am selecting and then I am pass into the respected index size of the array. Now, you do not need this. If 3 add-ins I have given, 3 add-ins will be coming into this. Ok, you just give the array here. Just give the array name. That's it. You do not need to give the index size or anything, just give the array name. That is it. So, we are reading from XML and then we are reading from, uh, oh sorry, uh, all the add-ins we are reading from that XML file and we are storing here and then we are passing to the next, so we are launching it.
visible true or false again we have to specify in the uh, we, we have specified in the xml right we have specified in the xml if we have given true there it should launch in visible mode if we have given false there we should launch in invisible mode okay, okay. so what i'll do is uh, we'll say set o visible element any variable name you can give then you can say Or you can also use select single node, but actually the best way is use a select single node. But I am using a, you know, uh, get elements by tag name, and the tag name is visible. Okay, so bln visible equal to this dot item of zero dot text. Okay, so select case U case of select case U case of bellum visible case true because that will be returned as a string value. Okay, so that's the reason I know. I am just saying this and I am setting it this will be billion and this will be taken as a strict when I read that from XML. Case you can directly say else case else oft dot visible equal to reading you know everything you can directly do those settings inside the script you know that's not wrong but the only thing is uh, every time you have to spend a lot of time in uh, changing it okay so tomorrow if the configuration gets changed you have to open the script and then you need to keep changing so instead of that we are doing everything from x now let me run again now i just closed the tool I have given the visible as uh, true here and I have given three arrays, right? XML is proper, XML, there should be no issue in XML. The, just wait, let the tool gets launched. The tool has launched now and go to file settings and you can see three addings have been selected activex visual basic and web right but okay so now what i'll do is i'll just uh, i just closed i will go here in the configuration file i will do this i will remove visual basic so now i'm giving only three addings sorry two addings now i'm not changing anything in the script and I will make it as visible as possible. I will do it later. For now, I just selected two addings and rerun again. Just wait. Let it get large and okay. File settings. And now you can see only two addings have been selected. Visual Basic is not selected. The reason why it is not selected, I have done the external configuration. This is the use of for doing the external configuration. So you can set up any kind of configuration automatically. So when you are not only in EFT, remember, not only in EFT. EFT, we are using this technologies. But when you are using other tools and all, when you are defining the framework, so this all this have to be given uh, externally. Okay. So then your script can uh, uh, do all the settings everything automatically you don't need to change anything at the script level okay so like this you know we need to do first
Okay.